Hi, everybody. My name is Josh Rapoon. I'm the host of the What School Could Be podcast, an evangelist for What School Could Be. Uh, coming to you uh, on this um, September 26th day, um, and you're going to be seeing this video on October 5th as part of Julie Maurer's presentation. Um, today, um, we have Caroline Landry with us from Hawaii Island, um, and Julie will introduce Caroline in person. So just before you have seen this or will see this video, you'll actually get an introduction. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to dive into some questions for Caroline um, related to her support for the Bonner Leadership Program at UH Hilo and Julie's direction of that program. And so, Caroline, thank you so much for spending this time with us today. My pleasure. So, Caroline, um, your LinkedIn profiles about section states the following, and I quote, um, computer engineer, ASIC design, computer science teacher, first Lego league coach, development of STEM education initiatives, grant writing, unquote. So at what point and why did philanthropy become part of your life's journey and work? Well, what I forgot to include in my LinkedIn is I'm also a mom. And mm. my background as a computer engineer predisposed me to volunteer as a technology teacher in their school um, when my kids were little and also to coach first Lego League. So um, I was uh, doing this work and that brought me to other things. Um, I worked, in fact, uh, a part-time job as an educator in their school uh, as a volunteer and uh, that brought me to do some grant writing because school always need fundings for their programs. And so that the my first uh, introduction to philanthropy was from the um, grant writing and asking side. Um, over time, I as my kids were growing up, I realized that there was so much, only so much I could do myself with my time and teaching. And that didn't scale, uh, and mm. my energy didn't scale. So, I, uh, as my personal situation was evolving, I decided to shift from supporting others in that work with my uh, res my other resources. Mm. So, Caroline, it's it's fair to say that in the process of um, teaching yourself, if you will, grant writing, you learned a great deal about the process of grant writing, right? You were it was learn by doing, makahana kaike. You were right in the middle of it, learning how to do it. Is that a fair way of describing how that was unfolding for you? Um, teaching myself, but not by myself. I was part of a group, right? Where mm. we were at my school, some people knew how to write grants, but knew nothing about technology. Some mm. people, um, you know, <laughs> saw the incentive and the imperative to get some money, Um you know, period, just yeah. get any more resources at all. So all the people that had different parts of this picture got together and wrote a grant together. And the process of doing that was really helpful to communicate to one another what was important, what we should do, setting the goals. So the let's go get some money for the school incentive, if you will, was a powerful catalyst for us to focus on, okay, what do we do with our technology program and how? Hmm. See, right away, Julie, I knew that this was going to be an awesome moment, right? Because <laughs> what, Caroline is, what Caroline's talking about is really crowdsourcing the process of writing a grant and learning together um, and bringing all of the different perspectives of what the school needed to be able to write that grant in such a way that it would be successful. So Caroline, I, I love that thought um, right out of the gate that you were not a lone operator just swimming against the tide of trying to figure out how does this work, that you were actually working with other people. And in some ways, that's the North Star of education today for those of us reimagining education is that it's not done alone. It's done as a collaborative um, team effort. So that's awesome. Okay, so we're seeing a shift, Caroline, in philanthropy to be more collaborative than it has been in the past. So do you see this happening on Hawaii Island? Like, What have you learned 
from connecting with other funders? And what outcomes do you hope to see from these connections and relationships that you're building with other funders, philanthropists, investors, and givers? Yes, so I I do I do hear of and and live that shift. So as I graduated from grant writer to funder, and that's yeah, we'll not go into the details of how that happened. Um, I I it's interesting to be able to see both sides because on the the grant writing side, I saw how much work and how burdensome that was, especially doing it as a group, and you didn't have a whole lot of experience doing that. On the funder side, I realize you have to, you know, allocate your money wisely and to the people who need it and who are able to use it. But the question is how much hoops and how much trouble is the grant writer going to have to go through? And so I do hear uh, my first uh, introduction to philanthropy was um, with Hawaii Community Foundation uh, eight years ago. It was quite traditional back then. Um, but then from them and other funders, I am hearing, and it makes a lot of sense to me, how do you remove the burden, you know, from those organizations to be the asker and the beggar to let's work together to do something and how can we make it easy? So I I am definitely hearing that. However, being on the granting side, being the co-chair of the Kukio Community Fund and having myself had to administer uh, recently a summer program, uh, a small grant program, there is this challenge of, well, who do we give to and how much? And, mm -hmm. you know, do we just go with what they ask? So um, I think that for me, what works is I get a lot of confidence if I can get involved myself in the community and so then I get information and knowledge of who's doing what and who's doing it well and mm. and then get to know the people and trust the people. Does that answer mm. your question? Yeah, absolutely. And I have a follow-up question to it, which is that I can imagine that along the journey as you were getting to know other philanthropists and investors and so on, that um, you were probably learning of different approaches towards accountability for the funds that were being granted. That it but it was, I, I would bet my wallet that it wasn't the same for every single uh, grantor or, or every single philanthropist, that they had different approaches and that you were learning along the journey how people were holding those who were getting the funds accountable for the money and that that was beginning to help you develop your own singular approach to that sort of accountability. Is that a fair way of looking at how that journey was unfolding? Well, the fair and honest way to say this is I'm still working on the accountability part. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I certainly got exposed and learned uh, various approaches. You can you know, ask for reflections, you can ask for a uh, final tally of how was the money spent, you can, ask for photos and you know those are the most powerful things like the, the photos that that you can get from happy young people um into right. programs right right yeah and we I, I know through previous meetings of funder hui and and my years in education that the concept of stickiness is very important that when you give money to a particular program what you're looking for is that the mission of that program actually sticks um, and that's part of the accountability equation as well. So that's a good segue to this next question, which is one of the main focus areas for funder hui is, quote, trust-based philanthropy. Um, so what does this concept mean to you? And, and what stood out to you about Julie's work with the Bonner Leadership Program at UH Hilo and its cohort of student leaders? And now there's a new cohort that Julie has just announced and the design of the program that started you down the road to trusting this was a program that you wanted to support through your philanthropy? Well, as I mentioned before, the best way for me to get in, uh, to understand and trust a program is to get involved myself and get to know the people 
And if you know and trust the people, then it gives you a high degree of confidence that the funds will be utilized well. So I got to know um, Julie through my work and her work at Vibrant Hawaii. We're both part of the workforce development core team of uh, the education stream. And this is how I got to know about the Bonner program. And um, there was a presentation of the of the program and, um, and it seemed great uh, for many reasons. So, and, and I knew Julie and I, I knew uh, that she was a really hard worker and that she really um, wanted to help people and she has great skills and is highly credentialed. So to me, uh, that's a big plus knowing the people. And then about the program per se, I knew that it's for the youth. Um, that's my area of interest and empowering the youth and trusting them and putting their future into their own hands and getting them to be involved with their community and and so that they can see that they can lead and they can help. And that is according to some other people, um, um, some other things that I really believe in, like the blue zones concept, which is you have to mm. connect with people and you have to um, have a sense of purpose to get a sense of self self worth, and that gives you happiness in a long life. So I, I think bringing that to the youth. Uh, one thing that I find the most sad, and I see it with my nephew also, is things that they say sometimes and they get the feeling that, oh, our generation is doomed and I'm never going to own a house and I'm never going to have a, a good career. And so shifting that and letting young people being involved in their community and helping others, I think ought to be very uplifting. So that was the main thing. Then the fact that there was a stipend to students removes barriers. You know, you can do that or you can go work, you know, what maybe a, work is, is very valuable too, but I'm just going to use for an example, working at that McDonald's or be part of the Bonner cohort, which is in line with your education and you're getting credits for. So I think that's more valuable, even more valuable. Um, and the fact that it had also been pre-vetted quite extensively by getting the GEAR grant program for the first year uh, right. was another reason that it made it a pretty much bulletproof investment in my mind. That's awesome, Caroline. I, um, so another follow-up question to that then. Uh, you know, when I did my What School Could Be podcast episode with Julie and uh, the couple of weeks that I spent preparing for that, one of the things about Bonner that really jumped out at me was, and 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 it just seemed very different than anything I had seen before, was that it was a four-year program rather than a one-year program. And when you talk about empowerment and relationships, I think one of the truths that we sometimes disregard is that relationships take a long time to build. And if, if a, a leadership program is only a year or six months or, or a semester, that's very difficult to do. So I wonder what your thoughts are about that vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, as you looked at the program, you thought, this is something I would love to support. Actually, I am not sure that I thought that through about the fact that it was a long-term program, other than it's really something that follows the, the, the four-year degree that you are um getting at the university but that ties into a, a thought that I have that a lot of the grants are one year based grants you know you have to reapply every year yeah. and in speaking with funders uh, I have to point out that's really not the best way to do it because you have to put a lot of energy into setting up a new program and you know, there's the setup, there's the making it better as you go and as you learn. So I would I would advocate for longer term granting programs uh, with our funders uh, whenever possible. Mm, yeah, very definitely, Caroline. That's one of the things that we've talked about in previous meetings of this funder who we working group on education is the idea that these short term grant uh, um 
applications and then you have to keep redoing it over and over again makes it very difficult to sort of build a sense of continuity um, through whatever program it is that you're that you're funding or trying to get funding for. Um, so I really, I hear you loud and clear about that. So I think maybe the last thing I would love to ask you today is that I wonder if you can just share a little bit about your personal um, interactions. Oh, we lost Julie. That's okay. Oh. Well, <laughs> I'm sure she'll come back. She'll come back. Okay. So um, what about your your personal interactions with the actual students in the Bonner program? Like what actual in-person interactions have you had? And, and what does that stir up in you? Like what, what kinds of head and heart kinds of things happen when you actually meet these young kids who are becoming empowered and, and becoming um, relational leaders, if you will? Well, what, yeah, I should really make the trip to Hilo <laughs> and meet those people. Mm. So far, um, I haven't had the time. And so I have learned about them through the uh, nice and spiffy reports that Julie has prepared right. <laughs> for me. And uh, I would really like to meet them and we'll make a point to do so. Yeah. In this cohort, in this following year. Yeah. Good point. Thank I you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's one of the things that I've learned through this process of facilitating uh, the working group is that, that 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 the new age philanthropy, if you will, is tends more towards those types of interactions um, and that you actually get to know the people who are the object of the program that's being funded. Yeah. Um, yeah. And getting getting in there with your with your head and your heart in your hands as part of it. That's something that we've been talking about quite extensively in these groups. So, yeah. Got it. So don't just learn to know the people who administer and create the programs, but also the beneficiary down the line. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks. Before we close, Julie, um, any anything that you want to add right here at the end? Because I know in a second, we'll go live with you after we watch this video, but something that you want to add that pops into your brain at this moment? No, I think um, that aspect of relationships, right, that Carolyn and I, and I have known each other for, what, four years now and worked together and built that over time in a different context is, you know, both volunteering um, for an organization grounded in similar values and, and priorities was really important and I think that continues you know we're still working together in that way and still trying to move things forward in our community together and yep. um, so that that relational aspect is huge yeah that's awesome Julie and I'm mindful of the image that you have for zoom which is behind you right now uh, which is you know the lo'i and the kalo that are growing in the lo'i um, and it feels like the perfect metaphor for the Bonner program um, and so that's great. Julie, thank you. Caroline, thank you so much for this time. I know uh, that you're going to be traveling at the moment that this meeting actually happens on October 5th. So we really appreciate um, your time today. Would um, you allow me a final word, Josh? Yes, please, please. Yes. <laughs> so in the interest of more collaborative and trust-based philanthropy, um, I'd like to think of, you know, there's no wall between the funders and the administrators of programs and i would like for this to be a little more uh, thought of more fluidly like we are all a community that contributes what we have and what we can and i know people who are not funder but work extra hard either at their job or as volunteers so we all contribute what we can and and that's that's my um observation through all this Yep. Love that thought. That's a great thought to end on working together towards the aims of whatever the program is that's um, that's being developed. So that's a that's a great thought to end on, Caroline. Thank you so much. Um, and I hope to get to meet you in person at some point soon. Hope so. Mahalo for having me. OK, I'm going to.